You're listening to STP Radio. Welcome back to STP Radio. I'm your host, Mike Lyles, and I'm excited to conduct another interview with one of our upcoming speakers at our fall STPCon conference. In case you've not signed up yet, STPCon will be in Dallas, Texas from September the 19th through the 22nd this year. And if you reach out to me, I can even share with you a discount code that'll save you on your registration. Be sure to check out www.stpcon.com where you can learn more about the conference, the speakers, our special events, and our conference pricing. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram. You can find us at Software Test Pro on both of these. So let's meet our guest for today. Today we have Amber Race. She is a senior software development engineer in test, which is SDET. I'm so excited to talk with her about that. At Big Fish Games, she is over 15 years of testing experience at Big Fish and Microsoft, doing everything from manual application testing to tools development to writing automation frameworks for web services. Amber, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So Amber, tell us a little bit about you, how you got into testing, and, and just some of your experience. Okay, well, I have kind of a little bit of an unorthodox uh, origin story, so to speak, as far as how I became a tester. Uh, my major in college was Asian studies. Uh, I had no interest in computer science whatsoever. Uh, my mother was a systems programmer, mainframe operator, and I didn't want anything to do with any of that geeky computer stuff that she did. So uh, I was a liberal arts major, and I studied Japanese. And after that, I went to Japan, and I taught English in a small town in Japan for three years. And then I came back to Seattle, and this would have been uh, 1995 when I came back. So I'm dating myself with that. Um, so I came back just as Microsoft was really starting to get going. And uh, it turns out that working as a glorified secretary in a Japanese export company doesn't make a whole lot of money. So I thought, hey, my friends are becoming software testers. Uh, I can do that too because I'm pretty smart. And it turns out that knowing Japanese got me in the door with a handwriting recognition group, uh, which later became the Tablet PC group. And it turned out to be really great experience. I was uh, at Microsoft for almost 10 years. And I worked with a lot of great people, and they provided a lot of awesome training. And I went from knowing Japanese but not knowing any code to being a full SDET, writing in C-sharp and doing database queries and all that sort of stuff. So it was really great. So then in 2008, I left Microsoft and I came to Big Fish Games, which was a big change. And uh, I've really been enjoying it, working in first it was web applications, and now it's all about mobile. Everything is mobile now, so there's always right. something so, so you mentioned yeah, that you were you were in Japan, and and I know uh, studying a few things for this interview, you you learned how to play drums with a local FICO group. Can you yeah, tell me about that? Yeah, so so I was in this little town of about five thousand people, and uh, I wanted to do something to sort of get in with the community. And I saw this group playing at a festival. I said they look cool. That's cool to be playing big drums on a stage. And so I uh, joined up with the group, and I did that. Uh, for three years, uh, I was there performing with them, and it was it was great. And I actually did that a little bit when I came back to Seattle as well. Now, can you can you relate any of the drum playing to what you do in testing and <laughs> your job? Um, well, I guess <laughs> the first thing that comes to mind is that you know when things, especially in an environment like I'm in now, where you have games that are out there and you need to release stuff right away, and uh, sometimes you just have to go with what's going on. I, one time I was playing the drums, and the guy next to me whacked my hand with his drumstick really hard. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I couldn't just stop and stop the performance. I just had to pick up the drumstick and move on, and it all worked out fine. So... That's a perfect example. I think I think that happens to us every day. I think I got my hands hit this <laughs> morning. <laughs> well, I hope not, because it was pretty painful. <laughs> yeah. So, Nick, you, you seem to have a ton of skills across multiple development and testing tools, C Sharp, C++, Python, Java, automation, iOS, Android. What do you think is your kind of your, your niche? What is your, your – where you feel the most comfortable in what you've done? Um, well, what I uh, have really enjoyed doing the most is testing back-end services. So I've done that both using Python and Java and just 
writing test automation for services, performance testing these services, figuring out all the ways that you can uh, break the the REST APIs and how it's interacting with the database. There's just so many issues and so many ways to get in there and, and tweak things and, and make things break. So I, that's what I enjoy the most. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, I know you have a session and your your session is called mailing it in using Postman to deliver first class results. And yes. This thing looks really interesting. I'll be honest, I don't know Postman. I've done development for many, many years before I got into testing. Um, I saw cookie management, and all I could think about was Oreo cookies because that's one of my <laughs> problems in my life, and that's why I'm the size I am. But but seriously, can, can you walk us through what you'll be sharing and give us some insight on your session and what you hope people will take away from it? Sure. Um, well, Postman is a tool that is really great and I don't I do not work for Postman I don't get any money from Postman but uh, I think it's a great tool um, I started using it just as a rest client meaning you can use it to send requests uh, without having to have the full application to send the requests um, but it has such a rich interface you can send all kinds of requests you know multi-part form with documents attached and all the different push and put and all that. So it has a really rich interface for that, which I want to explore, uh, which is great for exploratory testing within the API. And then it's also a great collaborative tool. So if you want to share your learnings about the API with people on your team, you can just package everything up and send it to them and they can load it up and they can run all the requests that you've done. So it's really great for collaboration. It's great for exploring. It's great for testing. And actually, I was just looking through it again today, and I found more features. So uh, I'm just hoping that we can go through some of those features and people can start getting comfortable with this tool, which is super helpful. So, so what, what type of attendee would you say should target? You know, someone's out there, they're coming to the, to the conference. What, what type of person would you look at in testing or, or, or an SDET that, you know, what kind, of, what kind of role does that person need or what kind of background do you want them to have to come in there? I think that uh, somebody who's somewhat familiar with backend services, you don't have to be expert. Uh, in fact, using a tool like Postman is a great way to learn more about the backend services that a lot of applications use. Um, so I think anybody that's just interested in learning more about service architecture, service testing, it would be good for any of those people. And people that have a lot of experience, too, uh, that haven't used the tool could learn a lot from it. Okay. So hopefully. Now, you, you had mentioned automation. What type of automation are you, do you have experience with? Um, I've done a lot of automation uh, with JUnit in uh, just functional automation, uh, using JUnit tests. Uh, I've done Python tests with functional automation, acceptance automation. Uh, I've done a lot of automation through JMeter. Uh, I'm working on a project now where I'm performance testing in JMeter, uh, which I guess counts as automation. Um, so we have a continuous integration environment at Big Fish Games where you have tests and they run in Jenkins. So uh, I've been, been able to work on a lot of things with that. Okay. Well, there's a lot of discussion in the testing community over there basically the core values of automation I and know. honestly <laughs> and, and, you know and honestly if, if i were to come right into the middle of a discussion i would i would i would probably think that i was stepping into one of these current political conventions because yeah. people are either on this side or they're on that side so what are your take on those discussions out there and how do you think we unite the testing world and make testing great again you know i think that it's really unfortunate that there's this sort of this divide between manual testing and automated testing and what's real testing and what's fake testing. Um, it's, you know, it's all important. Everything has its place. And, you know, I saw this sort of thing at Microsoft as well, sort of the opposite, sort of the opposite thing where manual testing was being devalued by some people and people that could code were, were being promoted over people that were just good to manual testers. And, and it's all important. So it's a pendulum that swings back and forth. When I was at Microsoft, it was swinging totally in favor of automating. We're going to automate everything. It's going to be great. Uh, it turns out you can't automate everything. A lot of times maintaining the automation isn't worth the trouble. So I think you just have to balance what you're doing with the automation versus 
what you can do manually. And it's it's actually a constant struggle for me uh, working at a game company. But if only we could automate these basic tests, then our testers wouldn't have to you know log into the game ten thousand times a day. But then how do you test a game automatically? You can't, right? It, somebody just right, has right. to play it. So that's so true. And I, you know, I think um, I think the gaming industry probably is one of those where it's very difficult to do the testing. Um, with automation, but it is, like you said, there are some things that are repetitive that you can do, and I think that's where automation really gives its value is doing those things where you're not really having to think. And a lot of games would probably have, i got to think whether I'm going to go left or go right, or I'm going to make this move or that move, or I'm going right. to make this decision. So but I still think there is a place for it. <laughs> so you, I, I, when I was in sixth grade, I got, I got trained on an Apple IIe computer, so I'll go ahead and date myself there. Mm -hmm. And got my certification. I'm going to be a programmer for the rest of my life, and I'm I'm going to do this. And uh, I was a programmer, but I didn't do it for the rest of my life. That wasn't for me. But I always thought through the years, as I sat and spent more time than I've ever spent in my life playing Super Mario Brothers <laughs> and Mike Tyson's Punch Out and and Galaga and and Pac Man, and I think I spent a year's salary nowadays on Pac Man with quarters. I always thought when I got into testing, man, it would, it would be really interesting to be a, a tester or working in testing for a game company. And and you've got to experience that both at Microsoft and with Big Fish Games. And, and you've done that for nine years with Microsoft. You've done it for seven years with Big Fish. So what are some of the things you've learned as a an SDET that you would share with someone who is wanting to move into this type of role or is very interested? You know, What kind of things do they need to prepare for? Well... I think um, you just have to be ready to learn whatever language is coming along. You can't say, well, I know Java, and so I'm set, or I know C Sharp, and I'm set, because there's always something new that you're going to have to pick up. You know, we did a thing where there was even a part that was in Erlang that I had to figure out how to test something that was written in Erlang. Thankfully, that wasn't very much, but it was there. <laughs> you know, there's Ruby, there's Python, there's always some new kind of framework that's coming along, and you just have to be open to... Uh, whatever the technology is bringing. I mean, when I started working at Big Fish Games, mobile wasn't even a thing. Everything was about the website. And now everything is mobile. And who knows what it's going to be in the next 10 years. And, so. and they have tons of tons of games. I was asking my son right before this interview, you know, have you played these games? He goes, yeah, I've got several of these games, Dad. You know, mm -hmm. so it's like I don't, I, I wasn't familiar with it. I kind of stopped after Angry Birds caused me to have to wear glasses <laughs> every single day now uh, because I literally played it because I had to be perfect on that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's it seems to be a really growing trend. And I think the thing that, that your company, and I know this isn't about your company, but mm -hmm. the thing that I see with Big Fish Games is you're not just marketing to the mobile world. You're marketing to iOS, Android. You're marketing to the Mac, the PC, to yep. online games. I mean, how do you see that being different versus just, just standard mobile testing that a lot of companies do today? I mean, in a lot of ways, it's the same. I mean, we have an application, and it needs to run on iOS, and it needs to run on Android, and it needs to run on Amazon. I mean, three basic platforms. I mean, in that sense, it's the same. In another sense, it's not really the same as a banking application because the the pressures are different, right? There's not so much pressure on security. It's more on the gameplay and are people having fun playing the game. So there's a lot more that can be forgiven in a game that maybe uh, wouldn't be forgiven in a banking application. So that's a difference. Um, there's constantly having to have new games in the pipeline because, I mean, Angry Birds was the hit game five years ago, and now where is it? I mean, that's just sort of how it goes with games. There's constantly having to be coming up with new games and pushing new stuff out there, and uh, it's a really kind of a hectic, fun environment to be working in. So, so that brings up a great question. Mm -hmm. and, and I hope I'm the first person in a podcast or an interview about <laughs> testing to talk about Pokemon Go. <laughs> so, so I want to ask you: Would you would you have liked to have been part of that team that tested this product? And what things do you think you could have done that would have made the product better or safer? <laughs> well, obviously, uh, we would love to have Pokemon Go as a big fish game because it's such a hit, right? <laughs> so, that's um, right. <laughs> I would have liked to have owned a little bit of uh, stock in the company right before right. that came out, you know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Pokemon Go is, is a pretty interesting game, and I, I should say that I haven't played a lot of it myself. Of course, when it became such a big thing, being for business reasons, I felt it was my duty to download it and play it a little bit just to know what was going on in the industry. Uh, I think it's a really interesting problem with um, 
you're out there in the world and where do Pokemon appear? There was a lot of stuff at the beginning about how they were appearing in places that was not really appropriate and how would you solve that sort of issue uh, was something that was interesting to me when it first came out. I, I'd be interested to know if there was anybody who brought that issue up and then people said, oh, it's too difficult to decide what's inappropriate and what's appropriate, but <laughs> we just need to get the game out there and depend on people to do the right thing, But uh, which is never a good course. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think that's characteristic of a lot of companies that, you know, get the product out there. We'll figure out how to fix it once it's done because our right. competitors are doing big things and we want to do that. But when yeah. you think about it, I've seen videos of people stopping cars in the middle of New York City and getting out and running in droves <laughs> right. to find a Pokemon and, and, and go after that. And I'm like, nobody would have ever thought of that situation unless you were one of these testers that just said, you know what, I'm not, I'm not scripting this. I'm not running from a script. <laughs> I'm going to imagine that if we're going to tie this thing to GPS and we're going to map this to the world, I need to be looking at making sure that people don't cross roads without looking and get hit by cars. Yeah, there's only so much you can do. Right. right. Yeah. So uh, I, I think that would have been a very difficult testing team. And, I'm, and I would have liked to have seen some of the defects yeah, and issues and they, that they logged. They didn't have a lot of performance issues at the start. And uh, maybe they just weren't ready for how huge and popular it would be. I mean, that's always... It's a problem everybody wants to have, right? I saw that on the news, and I, th I thought about you probably. I don't know if you remember. There's this old commercial during the Super Bowl where somebody was sitting in the middle of a room. They had a computer, and they were like one order, two order, three order, and they started <laughs> celebrating. And then all of a sudden, it goes a hundred order, two hundred, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand, and they're like, yeah. "Uh oh, we're in trouble." And I think that's probably what happened to Pokemon is they they yeah. they they expected it to do well, but they just didn't expect it to do that well. Yeah. And, yeah, it was word of word of mouth is big today in social media. So. Yeah, yeah, it really blew up quickly, and and I don't think they were prepared for it. Which you know, I have all the, all the sympathy for the poor ops guys over there trying to handle that. <laughs> <laughs> so one other question on apps or games. So what is the most difficult game or app that you've ever been part of, and and how did you overcome that struggle? Well, I should I should clarify here that I don't consider myself a game tester. That's a whole different field of expertise, which is. Okay. Actually playing the game. Uh, so I've, you know, I've concentrated on the services that are behind the game. So right. as far as that sort of challenge goes, um, we had a game that was coming out a couple years ago and we, we had lined it up. We're going to have this game. We got Apple to give us featuring and Google's going to give us featuring and it's going to be this huge hit game. So we really need to make sure that we can handle the traffic on the back end. Uh, you have three weeks to test it and there's no documentation. <laughs> for the service so um so that was an interesting problem <laughs> and that, that uh, sounds like a james bot course yeah <laughs> um yeah and it was using this uh difficult proto buff to pass it on so you couldn't just use a proxy and read what it was passing around because it was all in binary so having to figure all that out figure out a way to test it and and get load testing on it was was pretty challenging but we uh, were able to release the game and it, the service didn't crash when we released it so I call that a success. So I, uh, I think that's probably a more complex role than than actually doing the gaming itself is being able to make sure the back end works. You know, the, the cooks in the back that you never see that's preparing the, the food <laughs> that you're eating. So I think that's a yeah. it's commendable. Uh, one other question personally, I noticed that when you were in Japan, you learned karaoke and got into I karaoke. Did. Now, yes. now was this singing in Japanese, American, something else? Well, I mean, of course, at first I was limited to singing English songs, which got boring really quickly because usually there's yesterday and that was it, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I got tired of singing yesterday. So it was a great language tool to learn how to sing songs in Japanese. Uh, it helped me actually quite a bit learning the language. So I did learn how to sing some songs in Japanese, uh, which made me That's a big awesome. hit at parties. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, and I still enjoy it. Uh, the last few years ago at the company party, we had a live rock band, Rockaroki, at the party in one of the big venues here, like a real venue where real bands come to play. They had this Rockaroki, and so I was able to get up in front of the whole company and do Welcome to the Jungle, and it was awesome. So... <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was a, that's a good song to sing for it. Yeah. So. <laughs> so I think this is really good, Amber, because we just so happen to have a draft sports bar club at the conference in the same hotel where they do have a karaoke room. And I think that people listening, people that attend this conference should challenge you to a karaoke contest and let's see how things go from there. What do you think? Uh, I 
I will take all comers. I'm ready. <laughs> and it won't be me. I play the piano. I can do that very well, but it, nobody wants to hear me sing. Nobody. <laughs> so I'm sure you, you've seen that this awesome program lineup. I'm excited. Every time I've, I've been with STP Con for so long now, it feels like forever, and I love it. And the, the lineup just gets better and better. You were with us uh, last uh, April, and yes. we've got an awesome lineup coming for this, this one in Dallas. And as you look over the keynotes, the sessions, workshops, what are, what are some of the things you're seeing out there that, that interest you the most? And can you tell us what things you hope to take away from a couple of ones you really like? Sure. Well, I'm always trying to find the magic bullet that's going to help uh, get more automation involved in our test cycles, uh, which is always very difficult with games. But I was looking forward to, um, uh, hopefully I can pronounce this name, Bumika Srinivas's talk about automation looked interesting, how she wrote a framework for her application on three platforms. So getting tips about that, I was looking forward to that. Uh, I think that's on Thursday. Of course, Mark Tomlinson is always great with his performance talks. I usually go to one or two of those when I go to yes. SCPCon. Um, He's very entertaining. Yes. <laughs> And let's see, another one I was looking forward to was Richard Bradshaw's workshop on proxies. I use proxies a lot, and hopefully I can pick up some more tips from him. Yeah, I, I really think that, that, that people people in the U.S. may not know Richard as well as, as people in other countries, because he's well known across the planet. And he's coming and doing that one. He's also doing a couple of others, one on uh, Lego automation, literally using Legos <clears throat> to, treat, to show automation with Legos. Mm -hmm. And I think folks really need to look at what he's bringing to the table as well because we were very excited to be able to get his time and have him out with us and i agree with you i think i think mm -hmm. it's going to be really exciting some of the folks that are there for automation we have a really strong automation um, attendance folks coming and, and listening to automation but we also have several other programs with management leadership uh, performance testing and several others. So I, I agree with you completely on on your selections and mm -hmm. and uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna have a lot of fun and I think I think I think yours is gonna be really really sharp for some folks who want to learn something new, may have never heard of this just like myself, but mm -hmm. are interested in wanting to be there. And we're starting to see the courses fill up. We're starting to see registrations go up drastically right now. And, and folks are really starting to sign up for these courses, and, and yours is looking uh, to be a hit already. Great. I'm looking forward to it. So, Amber, I have one final question for you. And, mm -hmm. and I know you attended STPCon last time, did your first speech, uh, yes. speaking, and, and, and did very well. Got lots of awesome feedback. Twitter was blowing up when you were there, and I was so, so proud of you and happy for you. Even got James Bach to respond to you yes, and, I, and wish I you luck. So that was a good move. <laughs> So what would you like to tell the audience about the program and why they should attend and something you're looking forward to? Uh, this is actually going to be my third STP con. I went to Denver a couple of years ago just as an, attendant, an attendee, not speaking. And it's just such a friendly atmosphere. Um, people are really willing to talk to you about whatever's happening in your particular work situation or just being sociable. And it's really great to meet other people that are having the same test issues or have a different outlook. Um, so as far as networking is really great, the, the workshops have always been real helpful for me. Um, just, I, I kind of, sometimes I feel isolated in my work. I mean, mm -hmm. I get along great with everybody, all the developers, but sometimes I'm the only tester on a project. So it's always nice to, to get a wider view of the test community and see what's going on. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Amber. Thank you for being with us. I really appreciate your time. And, and, and I learned so much about you just preparing for our interview and, and, and speaking with you today. It's, it's so great to get to know more about you and hear about what you're going to be doing at STPCon. Well, thank you very much. It was my pleasure. And I'm looking All forward right. to seeing everyone in Dallas. All right. Thank you. Everyone, get out there. Get signed up. Reach out to me if you want a registration code to give yourself a 15% discount. It's good for a short period of time. We're hoping to see you in Dallas in just a month. It'll be September the 19th through the 22nd. Get signed up. Get to Dallas, and let's see you at STP Con. Thanks, and have a great day. Thanks for listening to this episode of STB Radio. You can find out more about STB Con coming up in Dallas September 19th through the 22nd by visiting stbcon.com. For more information, discounts, and more STB Radio episodes, follow us on Twitter at Software Test Pro.